requiring people to stand during the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we had a public hearing on this bill. Does anybody want to open up discussion on the bill? You can you we can talk about it a little while. We can make a motion and then talk about the motion. Okay, I'd like to talk about it. Okay. Um, I would like to see this. Um, I I don't think this is over uh, takes away any students in the school system rights because they are required to sit, they're required to be quiet, to listen to the teacher present. Um, there are tons of things that they're allowed to do. So by just requiring them to stand during a certain thing, like the Pledge of Allegiance, is not uh, anything uh, I can see that's against their, their rights. Uh, we heard a lot of testimony on this about uh, kids that were out of line when they were sitting down. And my question to the person speaking was, well, couldn't they be out of line if they were standing? And he said, well, I, I, I suppose they could. And then the follow-up, I don't remember if I asked of that speaker or of a different speaker, but I asked, isn't the teacher ultimately responsible for keeping the kids in line, and they said yes. And if they had a kid getting out of line, couldn't they then either make them stand in the hall or ask them to be removed from the room, or could there be some other disciplinary action? And the reason I ask these, and I don't want to get off track, but I, I, I truly believe that anybody should probably stand when we're doing the Pledge of Allegiance or singing the national anthem, you put your hand on your heart. That's just the way I feel, it's the way I was brought up. However, when I read the Constitution, I don't see where we can compel somebody to do something uh, that they don't feel that they want to do. However, I think there is uh, a repercussion if you're going to be sitting and being harassing of the others that are standing, perhaps if there's uh, a, a way that the teacher could take care of this or the person that's in charge of the classroom. Whereas uh, compelling them to do something is not going to necessarily make them stay in line. I guess that's my two cents on the whole thing. have no way of compelling students to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, then we have no way of compelling them to sit in a classroom. We have no way uh, to have them uh, mandate that they do their homework. You're, you're talking about them having the right to decide those things. If they have the right to decide those things, then they have the right to decide it in everything they do within the classroom. You're going to have anarchy. Representative Richardson and then Representative Schmidt and then Representative Brown. I'm sorry, I was, I was reading this and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm contemplating the law and I do have a uh, bill and I do have something to say because of. Um, go ahead. Um, just um, in response to what Representative Cartwright said, uh, it seems to me there is a difference between telling students they need to be quiet and not misbehave and telling them they must. Participate, or really a speech that you're asking them to participate in, because uh, the way the bill is written, it says pupils not participating in recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Current law says may silence, uh, stand, uh, or remain seated unless, uh, but shall not be required, but shall be required to respect the rights of others. I mean, what what you're really if you're when any of people stand for a ceremony, you are requiring them to engage in speech, to form a speech. And, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about the bill, quite honestly, but um, having read the introduction, talking about 
students you know, don't do have the right apparently not to participate in the pledge meeting. That is where you say they must recite the pledge meeting. Mm -hmm. But in this context, compelling them to stand is a form of speech. So to me, it's the same as if you said to them, you must recite the pledge. Mr. Chairman, I don't believe it's constitu constitutional, since I've questioned here, uh, because it is a form of freedom of speech to sit. As you can see, Mr. Chairman, we had quite a debate on this in the, in the uh, subcommittee, and there's a diversity of opinion. Oh, I, there was a subcommittee, wasn't there? Yeah. Is there a report of the subcommittee? Did we do a report? I'm sorry. There should be a report of the subcommittee. That's what subcommittees do. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll, while he's looking for that, I'll continue my, my comment. But a student in a public school is receiving the benefit of a public education, a public expense. Part of the function of a public school is to teach respect, both for the school, the system, and whatever, to be a respectful person. Uh, in other words, to teach proper conduct. And proper conduct, while someone is, is citing a pledge to the flag, would be to be respectful. And the imposition of requiring someone to stand is not abridging their speech. They recite the pleasure not as they choose, but the school should be able to require them to respect the system. I use the analogy, if we go to an athletic contest and the and Canadian team is playing, and they, they play the Canadian national anthem, most Americans would stand up out of respect for the Canadian anthem. We wouldn't sing it, but we would be respectful and quiet. And the school is simply teaching respect, not bridging rights by requiring somebody to stand. Davenport. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, I believe between these two, between uh, Rep. Richardson's, Rep. Schmidt's point and Rep. Carver's point, is the actual spot, as, as I'm seeing it. Uh, when, you're, when you're in the classroom, you are in a restricted speech area. You, you are allowed to leave the classroom, and, or attempt to, try to leave school if you're of age. You know, there's boundaries there. But anyway, you are in a a system where you have less degrees of freedom. And I don't believe there's any speech issue on remove the flag, remove the procedure that's happening here. The, the teacher can tell the student to sit or to stand, and that is not a speech issue. So, as far as I'm concerned, the question is, is when you have the procedure of the Pledge of Allegiance, is the act of standing making you participate in that act in a way that is restrictive of your free speech. And I, I, I personally think that that is where the question is. Um, not some amorphous thing of can, you, can we kind of teach or direct somebody to do something in the classroom like stand. And if that was part of the pledge, you would be saying, you will stand and put your hand here like this. That's where the, the speech issue would be in violation. Because when you're doing the action that distinguishes standing at a ceremony of graduation, the graduation ceremony, can you stand? Can they say stand? Yes, they, we can say stand. And at that point, there's no violation. It's, this is what distinguishes the act of standing. And coerces speech, is if you force somebody to show respect for the flag. That is the point. The point of standing is respect for the group function, not for the act of the flag. Um, and for that reason, I am leaning constitutional. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with what uh, Representative Schmidt said. Uh, I think that standing, or the pledge of allegiance is a sign of non 
And as far as other comments, I, I disagree with preparing homework or any other thing that you do in school. That is a class uh, rule. It has nothing to do with the patriotism of standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, and I'd just like to point out, I think, in a, in, a, in a similar situation, I think we set a very poor example. I was very disappointed at the beginning of last term, or beginning of last year, when the House rules were changed where veterans could salute the flag during the Pledge of Allegiance instead of standing there with their hand over their heart. Because I think it gives the wrong sign to people that's watching it on stream and video, or people that's up in the uh, upstairs, or especially the school children. School children come, they're looking down there and they're saying to the teacher, how's come that guy got his hand on his head and this guy over here got his hand on his head? That's a bunch of baloney. The only thing you're doing is adding a bunch of confusion. They should all be standing there correctly and, and, and not have that mess. I think it's a very poor example for children. Thank you. I just want to reiterate what I said earlier, probably a little more fairly. The issue I heard from the, from the sponsor and the other speaker wasn't so much about the standing as the uh, disruptiveness. And I think that that can already be dealt with under the current uh, law and rule. Uh, requiring somebody to stand or to, to sit respectively, I think we already do that. Is there a motion on the floor? Is there a second motion? I'm going to give it to Representative Smith. You will be referring to Brad Blair. Motion is up to pass. The motion on the floor is up to pass. Is there any further discussion on the motion? I would just say, Mr. Chair, that as this is drafted, Requiring somebody to stand is clearly speech. I mean, it's clearly forcing somebody who, for whatever reason, okay. doesn't want to stand. Uh, and, and it's no different than, uh, I suppose, burning the flag or whatever kind of protest somebody wants to engage in. I mean, the law does say that somebody can, you know, must be respectful and can either stand or sit currently. But by requiring people to stand up, uh, you are infringing on free speech. I'm not happy with uh, with that position, but that I think is what the Constitution requires. Seeing no further discussion, I suppose we'll take the roll. Uh, the motion is off to pass. Yay or nay, please. Kapler. Yes. Brown. No. Cartwright. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Krasuski. Yes. Luther. Yes. Nevins. Yes. Rosenwald. No. Richardson. No. Coulomb. No. Yes. Yeas have it. Is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes. Yeas have it. Eight to four. four. <coughs> I did seven to five. Did I miscount? It's definitely possible that I did. Okay. Four. I was I was late being counted. Well, I still get five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It better add up to twelve. And it does. Okay, I'm sorry. So what was the total? Eight to four. Eight to four? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair,